Good morning, you guys. It is Tuesday after the excitement of yesterday. We had so much happen and it's hard to even process. Um, so we'll talk all about it. The first thing I wanted to mention was so much good information comes in through the comments, people reaching out to me. So I know people say at times like, don't worry about the comments, but I kind of have to because it's helped me learn so much and dig into different topics. As an example, like the ETF flows, this came out of a comment and then an interaction with somebody, they shared all this data with me. So I have to say thank you again to them. Uh, and there's just been so much of that. So uh, I'm gonna continue doing that. But if you do leave a comment and you're unsatisfied with the response, or maybe it takes a while for me to respond, or if I don't see it, because some of them YouTube doesn't show me, then I do wanna just say, you know, sorry about that. I do try to get to them all in some way, shape or form. And even if I don't maybe respond, super well to it, I do want to say um, I'm probably thinking about it and maybe it's just going to take me a while to like process like what are they sharing with me here and how does it, is it important? Um, but I wanted to talk really quickly to this one. So um, the hot topic of the day I think would be, there's two of them. One of them has to do with Ryan Cohen's game plan and one of them has to do with Game Informer. Uh, so I'll talk about those. So I did also want to mention this like very, very clearly. I was trying to like clear this up because I saw some comments and I think it's very important, especially as people just joined to talk to it again and again. So what, what am I doing here with this channel? First of all, it's just fun for me. I wake up in the morning, I have my coffee. So cheers to everybody drinking some coffee. Um, so this is my attempt to follow the GameStop story and just, you know, because there's so much going on here. My boss asked yesterday, he's like, how do you find something to talk about every single day about GameStop? Like, there's always something. I was like, we got... Japanese market's melting down uh, Monday morning. Our stock market tanked because of this carry trade situation. GameStop went down like 14% or more in the pre-market. And then like basically right now is back to where it was on Friday or whatever. So there's always something to talk about. Um, and then I'm trying to solve the puzzle, which means like, why did these volatility periods happen? Why does it go from $10 to $80 as an example in May? And then, you know, attempt to try to figure out when they're gonna happen. But I don't know that we've done that. And then just have fun. And mostly in my life, I'm realizing how important it is to be encouraged and to be encouraging. So I do that at work. Like I've got at work written down like everywhere I can remember to put it, like be an encouragement. You know, there's gonna be frustrations. There's gonna be letdowns. Things are gonna be hard. Maybe that's something I'll speak to today. But encouragement is incredibly powerful. So, um, and take that as however you mean it. So I'm not encouraging people to do anything. I'm just saying that like things are tough. Like this is a tough time. Um, there's a lot of noise out there. People can get very frustrated, whether it's politics, current events, economics. Um, and I just want to kind of be a light amidst it all in some way and just kind of say, you know, like we're just going to keep on keeping on with whatever it is we're trying to do here. But here's what the channel is not. So definitely this is not meant to be financial advice. I think GameStop is a great story and I think it's actually the company's in a great place even though it's a retail brick and mortar store and there is a bear case that I talk to quite often. I think that um, the the bull case is decent. Um, the company is steadily transforming um, or has um, shored up its legacy business now has a lot of cash and so forth is debt free barely profitable. But there's all this volatility too, which I think is just really fun, um, but also unsettling for people. So um, I'm not trying to provide you with any kind of information with which to trade. I wanna make sure that's very clear. Um, if you trade GameStop, good luck, right? It's very, very challenging, lots of volatility. Uh, it just went down to like 17 something dollars yesterday. That was crazy. And just make good decisions with whatever it is you're trying to do here. And if I, if I mention any dates or ideas, it's just me trying to figure out the puzzle. People ask like, how do you feel about August 8th? And I'm like, I have no idea. Like, it's not a probability. It's not like I have like a little meter that's going up or down on August 8th. I don't know, like as it comes, if it doesn't happen, I'm not emotionally attached to it at all. Um, I'm not like, you know, I don't know. Just, I'm, I, I write it down. Does anything happen? Yes or no, if something happens, interesting. How does that play into our theory? If something doesn't happen, interesting. Why didn't it happen? So this is true for highs and lows. So could I have predicted the low of yesterday? Um, I wish I could have, but I didn't, you know. Um, no price targets. People ask like, how high do you think it could go during this particular date? No idea. Um, how high do you think MOAS will, will go or when will it happen? I don't know if MOAS is even a thing, you know. 
Um, I'm just constantly surprised following along. And um, I said down here at the bottom, I said, I do want to say that personally, I'm going to use this information exactly as I present it here. So like, I'm not like saying one thing and like using a different set of information, but I'm just following along the story, just like I'm presenting it. Um, I'm trying to make good decisions too, but I really don't think it's helpful if I were to pro provide any kind of information about my decisions, because you guys see me make mistakes constantly with even just like, I'll say January when I mean June. Right. Um, and then people will say like, well, what'd you mean by this when you said that? And it's like, not always clear. It's like, I don't think it's helpful. If people saw like what I hold at any particular moment and when I trade, whatever it is I trade, that would become financial advice just by nature of it being shared. And I don't want to be responsible for that because like I'm already responsible for my own mistakes, <laughs> which I'm constantly making. Now to have it hanging over me to be responsible for other people's mistakes that are maybe like um, following my trades, that would be terrible. So I don't want to have information about my financial decisions, leading others to make financial decisions for themselves. Again, the main thing here is just trying to follow the story, trying to solve the puzzle, have fun. If this becomes all about making money, then it's, it's not going to be fun anymore. So that all being said, any strategy has pros and cons. And I've said repeatedly, there's generally like three strategies here. Options, of course, incredibly risky, because then all these dates and price targets would be like on your mind constantly. And you'd have to manage your position so carefully and you can't trade them in the after hours or in the extended hours, which so much of what happens with GameStop occurs during those hours. And there's all this like thing with implied volatility to worry about and stuff. I'm just like, I can't be bothered with all that. Like I can't manage a position 24 hours a day. Like I've got a real life to deal with here and good luck to anybody trying to do options on GameStop of all things. Um, so options are a thing um, and I'm not pro or against them. I'm really not. It's just that seems really hard to me. So I just avoid them. Um, swing trading is a thing. And people have asked me, they've said, they say stuff like, wait, you've sold GameStop? And I'll, I'll just say straight up, like I bought GameStop, I have sold GameStop. I don't see anything wrong with buying and selling GameStop. There are two buttons on the thing, on any, any position. You could buy it and you can sell it. And um, I'm not opposed to either button. Uh, and then the final one is the people that like don't want to sell. They just want to accumulate. Um, buy shares and then maybe put those shares in DRS. I've tried that strategy too. Uh, that strategy has its own pros and cons. So um, the strength of any of these strategies though will only work or will only really come true if um, people are really good at constructing the strategy based on information and then executing the strategy you know, with fidelity and also being responsive to how events unfold with respect to their plan. So I'll give you an example. Like if your plan is to purchase options and then sell those options uh, into like some kind of volatility or uptrend, and then you get really excited because of a bunch of posts on Superstonk and then you don't sell your options and you think it's gonna keep running up higher and you change your price target or you adjust your plan, like that's, you know, that's not doing this. That, so you need to construct the plan, you need to execute the plan, and you need to um, deal with events as they unfold with respect to your plan. And to some extent, like main tr maintain true to your plan and not get deviated. But then at times, like there are, there are gonna be times when like maybe you have to adjust the plan. Like maybe all of a sudden a share offering comes in and you need to adjust accordingly. So I would just say, you know, there's so many dynamic events here that making a plan and fluidly being responsive to it is, is such a hard thing. And we've had to learn so much uh, through this whole process about it. This is taking forever to say. It's got like 400 slides. <laughs> but hopefully that makes it clear for people what I'm doing here and how I'm doing it. So I'm gathering information, presenting that information. Some of the information is analytical. Uh, some of it is trend analysis. Some of it's just the day to day some of its sentiment and uh, different stuff being shared by the community. And to some extent, it's a, it's a way to like gather a whole bunch of stuff into one place and then maybe hope that a lot of good ideas emerge out of it. So hopefully there's people like that got really inspired by the idea that swaps could have played a big role back here in June. I think that's very true. And are now digging deeply into swaps. 
while other people are saying on the shorter term, maybe ETF flows have something to do with a lot of the story. I think that's totally true because um, we can see that interesting ETF behavior happens around these spikes, which leads me to maybe the topic of the day, which is like, why are they redeeming so much XRT suddenly? I don't know, very interesting to me. Um, and price is so low, but um, anyway, um, hopefully that was clear in that first part. I'm not opposed to any strategy. I'm not recommending any strategy. I'm, I'm gonna try as hard as possible never to provide date guidance or price guidance if a date is mentioned. It's only as a curiosity and something to look at. And if it if it manifests, like June 6th, awesome. Builds into the theory. If it misses, or, or like it happened, like this June 16th thing, like what happened here? Like I'm like, I did not have this on my radar at all. Someone called it out as a swap expiry. Um, but, you know, it's like a baby blip here. And then what's happening right here? What's, what's up with this big dip down? Like didn't anticipate this one. And like to what magnitude or price point, like, you know, we can never know. So um, hopefully that's clear for everybody. And if people ask questions in the chat and they say stuff like, Richard, how much GameStop do you have? Or what's your cost basis and all this stuff, different stuff. I'll just, hopefully that makes it clear for people why I, I don't feel like there's any value in sharing that information. It's just gonna make it all about the money and trying to trade this thing successfully. And I'm not very good at that. So I don't wanna share that with people. It's just like, do, do whatever you're gonna do with this information and I will simultaneously try to do whatever I'm gonna do with the information. So what is the information of the day? Well, we just hit an incredible low. I think, where do we open at here? We opened it, I, I think in the pre-market, it hit as low as like almost back to the 200 day moving average. That's substantial. This is an in enormous gap down. What's really important, I think the, the most important data points of the day is huge volume on XRT. This was redemption. So they were breaking apart units of XRT. I think it's really interesting. And we see um, lots of stocks going on reg show yesterday, but no interesting GameStop related stocks, I would say. Everything looks very bearish across all of Roaring Kitty's charts right now. RSI is very oversold, like on all, all levels. But we do see tons of buying come in. We haven't seen buying come in like this since the first share offering. So long reported volume, approaching 70%, that's really good. Tells me that like a lot of people bought the dip. People apparently didn't want to short it because we see uh, available shares to short climbing again. That's that's a good indicator. And we're well below max pain. So to me, I don't know, could this signal a, a period now where we'll see a reversal on the stock? I, I think it's tied generally to what's going on with the overall market. Um, <laughs> kitty there um i did want to mention just a few other things so I'm, i've got all this research open sorry for all these tabs i'm digging into things like the rules for options uh, this is stuff that comes out of people sharing with me someone mentioned i misstated this um, the options related fail to deliver settlement rule i think is really interesting because it doesn't come up too often while reg show for equities is 35 calendar days options related fails to deliver is 20 calendar days so that could be, that's something I haven't looked closely at. 20 calendar days is obnoxious because it's not divisible by seven. So it's not four weeks. Um, it's actually what, like three, just shy of three weeks. So, and then, yeah, so that's, that's kind of weird. Um, and then a lot of people are basically looking at the timeline and they're saying, what, is this the crash? Did Roaring Kitty predict a crash? And would that lead to some kind of um, amazing activity on GameStop? I'm super hopeful for that. Uh, this person also mentions it in their post right here. So I love what Mojo Master is doing here on the day to day. I was a little concerned because their last post got deleted, but then they posted a post yesterday, which was great. And they talk about basically the idea that, you know, the overall market is dumping. VIX went up to 65, which was wild, which is like one of the highest points it's been since the financial collapse in 2008. We're seeing the market begin to rally a bit today in the pre-market. Could it be like a dead cat bounce? Um, will it continue to decline? We saw the uh, Japanese market rally strongly. There's a reason that could have been, I wanna say really quickly here. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about this carry trade, which is that with Japanese yen being so cheap to borrow, they were able to get a whole bunch of Japanese yen, 
convert it into US dollars, invest in US equities, with now the interest rates in Japan rising a bit, it was causing the yen to strengthen. So all of a sudden, um, the relative value of the USD versus the yen was, was shifting on them and they were losing value super quickly. And so they wanted to convert their US dollars back into yen before they continued to lose money there on the exchange rate. So they liquidated their US assets, moved it all back into US dollars, then back into yen. Well, what would they do with all that yen at that point? Still pretty cheap to borrow over there, right? So probably throw it all at their market. So that could explain the big rise in the Japanese market today. Equities are cheap. They just did a big sell off. Why not pump them all into the equities, get a big rally, make a whole bunch of money back. Um, but what's going to happen with U.S. stocks as a result? You know, all those potential investors using all that Japanese yen are no longer present. How much support will this thing find? Um, I don't know that there's a lot of reasons to be encouraged by the U.S. markets right now. Um, but people have pointed out some of the biggest rallies of all time happened during the financial crisis. So you'll see the biggest drawdowns in 2008 and the biggest biggest rallies because there's just lots of volatility. Uh, more options volume uh, yesterday than ever in history. So we're just seeing incredible volatility on the overall markets. We saw GameStop uh, get slammed down, what, like 14 or more percent in the pre-market, but then rally strongly back out of it. And I think we're coming back to, how are we looking in the pre-market? Yeah, pre-market's looking good. So, you know, we've almost returned back to where we were at back here so this is what the second august 2nd so um could we keep rallying um maybe we're now on a momentum positive because it seems like gamestop's so momentum driven so maybe we see some positive momentum now um call options uh yellowing i don't know we'll, we'll see uh, but they're basically saying there's not a lot of options activity for our weeklies for this week i believe that's what they're saying here um yeah, sparse, gamma going on here. Um, it says here, major institutions are pushing the price down by shorting ETFs or off exchange measures. I would totally agree. We're not seeing direct shorting, but we saw a huge volume on XRT. And simultaneously, it wasn't creation of XRT now, it's redemption. So they're, they're breaking apart units of these ETFs, uh, shorting the ETFs, and then I would agree, unpredictable volatility, true for the total market. Um, and what happens with the total market and ETFs on the total market is then going to play strongly into GameStop. Um, forward looking, basically mentioning, you know, it's totally possible that Roaring Kitty saw this coming, lines up with his emoji timeline. Uh, the Volkswagen squeeze happened during the drawdown in 2028, or 2028, 20, <laughs> 2008. Um, on October 28th specifically. So um, they're always mentioning at the end here, uh, October 29th, 2024 is National Cat Day. Uh, I think International Cat Day is, I thought I had it on here. Um, yeah, International Cat Day is on Thursday. <laughs> I don't know if that's relevant at all, but I, lo I love their post, very clear. Um, and then last thing I wanted to mention here was two things. First one is, where do I have, where do I have them? There were people complaining um, that Ryan Cohen's original letter to the board asked for clear, a clear roadmap for shareholders. And I had said the same thing because back here when I wrote my letter to the board, I cited him and I specifically said something along the lines, here's my letter to the board, that A, you had said in your letter, a roadmap would be great. I'd like to see a roadmap too, but I also understand the reason to not telegraph every move to competitors. So like OPSEC or operational security, very important for a business. Um, and then in, in some retrospect, I, I later like retracted that a bit because I, I thought to myself, you know what? His letter to the board, which is right here, is the roadmap. Like if you read through this thing, it outlines exactly what they what he wanted them to do and what they're doing. So um, he basically talks about identify underperforming stores and locations and forego the lease renewals. We've seen them doing that tremendously. 
uh, draw down, sell, or reduce underperforming um, segments of the business. So we see that, just like with Game Informer. Um, use the cash flows from the console cycle to finance future initiatives that are, that are not risky, hopefully. Uh, I think we've seen that, and we're seeing that now. And then delight and retain gamers. And I called it powering up the GameStop brand. And, you know, take advantage of the explosion that should happen in gaming revenue uh, in 2023 up to 200 billion. I'm not sure where it stands today. And then if you look at their 10 Qs and 10 Ks, there's just a lot more detail on all this front too. You know, could we have a stronger roadmap than this and what's contained in the, you know, guidelines? Because the, the company sets it up. I could just pull one up. In one of these, um, I don't know, let's look at, I didn't really intend to do this, but let's just go ahead and look at Q3. Look at the 10K for the years. This just came out in March, I believe. And it should be all in here. So they talk about the business. And then they talk about um, their game plan, which is right here, business strategy. So establish omnichannel retail excellence. Anyone that's supporting the company right now, you'll notice this. Like I order stuff constantly, way too much actually, on GameStop. It's super smooth now, incredibly smooth. I find an item, I add it to my, cut, or my, my cart. I use my GameStop pros points and stuff. I sometimes have it delivered to the store. It's often coming straight from stores. Uh, very quick shipping, faster than like anyone else I'm dealing with, actually. I think faster even than Amazon. Um, even when it's something like a Pokemon card coming from one um, shop somewhere in the United States directly to me, um, I'd say they're overpackaged. Like I hope that they actually like um, from these stores that are delivering a lot of Pokemon cards actually come up with like a, a better packaging that's smaller and maybe very durable and cheap um, and, and <laughs> I don't know there's actually it's funny because there's actually like a stem unit we do in our district related to, the, to this whole thing so what's the ideal packaging to ship these things that's cheap um, environmentally friendly and not gigantic uh, so I don't know so and <laughs> not super wasteful so um, achieve profitability they did that and then leverage a brand equity to support growth um, so yeah, like hopefully they can do those things and they've got some other stuff here related to the, the business. So it's, it's broad. It's not getting into the very, very specific things. Like, but should they have advertised a year ago that they were hoping to move into the PSA graded cards? I don't know. I don't know if that's a good strategy to, to air every detail, but giving enough, um, I think is important. So last things to mention here. Um, first one is Game Informer magazine being shut down. I would just say to people like, um, you know, if you want segments of the business to do well, you have to support them. And for the longest time I had, um, you know, become a subscriber to Game Informer Magazine on there. I just took it off this morning because now it's shutting down. But I've been a Game Informer Magazine subscriber and I've been a GameStop Pro member subscriber since like 2021. Um, if you want these things to be successful, you must support them. They have to make money at the end of the day. I'll just leave it there. This is a business. Uh, it's not a charity. And I think that there's a, uh, a sentiment amongst the community that's completely unreasonable, suggesting that GameStop somehow needs to like provide better compensation and benefits to their employees and needs to like do all this different stuff that at the bottom line doesn't make sense for a business, especially a business like GameStop to do. And I think that like if your um, emotions are, and your values are driving you to think that the business needs to do certain things and like that a business can't do and that affects your investment strategy in that business. I just have to caution people like this is real life. You know, if the company burns money paying wages that are out of sync with what um, they can really afford to do or supporting um, initiatives or segments of their business that are bleeding money, uh, just for the sake because you like them and you like what they represent or something I, it's just like that's not real like that's a business can't survive doing that so it's sad i'm i'm you know you know I, i'm sad about it because i like their magazines i think they're cool but you know legacy print media i could i could kind of tell um they they decoupled it 
from the pros membership, I thought that wasn't a good sign because they're probably just probably feeling out like, you know, are people going to still be willing to sign up for this thing if it's not included? I'm guessing they didn't get enough signups. So I wish people would have signed up for it. 200,000 people DRS. Seems like if those people had signed up for the magazine, probably would have survived. Um, and then they posted their goodbye message and then put the business shut down the segment. So they shut down the account, as you would expect. I just feel like people get really emotional about this stuff and like attribute a whole bunch of stuff to it that's like, guys, this is a business. Like, you know, like there's no good way to terminate people. You terminate them, you let them go, you close off that part of the business, people say their goodbye, and then it goes away. And if they digitize those, um, all that media that was created, that'd be cool. They don't have to though. Like it needs to be a money-making venture and hopefully there's some money in it. Um, so if you think that there's value there, to be had by taking all that old content and dig digitizing it. Um, cool, but maybe someone will take it on as a pet project as well or something like that. I don't know. So I just feel like, you know, I'm disappointed, but just like with the NFT marketplace, you just roll on, see what's going to happen next. Um, trust that the business decision making is best for the business, not for whatever other factors people might be taking into consideration. And then the last thing I want to mention is SSR. So people new to the story might be like, what is this all about? Um, short sale restriction list, cool, they can't short the stock anymore. It's not quite how it works. It means that if a stock or anything really goes down 10% or more in a trading day, till the end of that trading day and then the following day, you can only short into an uptick. So that means that like if the stock's like just going down, 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 in theory, you can't keep shorting it. But we all know it could just like blip up a tiny little bit and then they could short it down again really far. So in practice, SSR has never really done too much for GameStop, but it certainly was probably somewhat helpful in letting us rally out of this deep low. And then we'll we'll see what it does for today. With, with SSR turned on today, that means they're only going to be able to short it down um, off of an uptick for the duration of this trading day. So we'll see, we'll see how impactful that is, and we'll also see how impactful it is that the broader market probably is going to experience a bit of a rally maybe although i have to say the pre-market always seems to invert the regular market so i'm always like looking at this and going yeah this is this is a fake out this is probably some some kind of fake out here i don't know we'll see anyway um hopefully that's helpful for you guys um tried to cover everything in that one i hope you have a great day and we'll see what happens next with gamestop